Hello everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to make an NPC that has a dialogue and also gives you something at the end of the dialogue, so like a speed boost, jump boost, or an item. So to get started, obviously uh, you need your NPC, so you guys probably already have an NPC, so what I'm going to do is going to get some random uh, guy here, um, I will get this guy here. And then we'll just name this guy um, NPC. So this is gonna guy that will uh, be our dialogue for now. So what we're gonna do is to activate this, I'm gonna use a proximity prompt. So I'm just gonna insert a proximity prompt into him. Now we can edit the uh, properties here. We can do the hold duration, so how long the button is holding for. So I'll do two seconds. I'll keep the keyboard key code at E. And the action text will be, um, this is like the bigger text that the player will probably see first. Speak. And the object text is like the description. So we can say, um, speak to this NPC. And there, there's, our, there's our proximity prompt done. So you can now close that. Now we've got to create the actual dialogue. So I'm going to go to start a GUI and create a, a screen GUI. I'm going to name this to dialogue GUI like that and then I'm going to add a um a frame I'm just going to position it and make it a nice like size right in the middle yeah like that and then once you're done you obviously you will customize your frame and do all that like that and then we're gonna name this to our back we're gonna name this frame called i'll name it background and then we're gonna get i'm gonna get a um text label and this will be the name of our npc right here so right here i'm gonna name this guy um just noob and then Obviously, I'm going to scale the text, and I'm going to make this like transparency to zero one, so you can't like see the background, and change the text color to white. That, then you you can obviously pick your um pick your font like that. So there we go. We got noob, and then I'm going to name this to name. Obviously, you could change this to whatever your um character is and then i'm gonna get another uh text label this will be our dialogue and i'm just going to put it here i'm gonna put new back at the end here the dialogue like this yeah then i'll make this a bit darker so then oh, i'll just do that i'll just make it this one here it blends in Yeah, and then I'm going to scale my text and then make it the same font. Give it smaller. Go like that. And there we go. So now I'm going to name this to dialogue. Now you can customize your GUI to make it look a bit better. So either here's like some basic uh, GUI stuff. Uh, so basic GUI. And then once you've done that, we're gonna insert a script into our um into our dialogue. And this will be our way uh, dialogue here. So I'm gonna make it a typewriter kind of effect, so that it's not gonna like the text is not gonna appear like in a flash. It's gonna like slowly write it out like this, uh, like that. If you get what I mean. So let's create that function first. So we'll do local function typewrite object text and then. So we'll do for i, which is the one letter, equals to one. Hashtag text one do so for every letter in the uh text label so the text 
will be um so we're gonna create a sound for each uh you know letter we'll do local sound equals to instance dot new sound so we'll create one we'll make the name sound dot name equal to dialogue sound then we'll do sound dot parent we're gonna set it to the workspace so game dot workspace then I'm gonna do sound dot sound id equals to then uh these and then rbx asset id colon slash slash and then you're gonna paste the id of your sound in so to do this go to the toolbox go to audio and type in uh just a text sound i guess and obviously you have these but for this i'm gonna choose sans because it's probably one of the best there yeah so there are the sans and then we'll do sound play and they'll do um object dot text object the text label uh object dot text is the string dot sub uh sub uh, text one i i so and i'm gonna wait the length so we'll wait for the sound to stop playing and then we'll go for the next one so then we'll do um for iv in pairs game dot look this get children so for so for v in pairs so for so we're gonna make a v the sound so you all explain this at the end so do um v dot name equals to dot sound name. Oops, two equals. Then we'll be destroyed. So basically, what we're doing here is we're creating a loop. So for IV in pairs, it's a loop, and we're getting the children. So the so this drop down menu. These are all the children in the workspace, and and basically we're looping to find the dialog sound. And so every time the dialog sound plays, it will destroy it. So like this, the multiple sounds don't uh, clutter up the workspace and make the game laggy. So there we go. There's our there's our there's our type right function done. So now what we can do is disable our dialog GUI, and we can go back to script. So now we can get to the NPC. We can do now game dot workspace wait for child. It's always better to do wait for child in case like, the players of the game is laggy and the NPC hasn't loaded into the game yet for them. So the wait for child dot NPC dot proximity prompt. So we're finding the proximity prompt in the NPC, and then we'll do colon triggered. Oops, sorry. Proximity prompt dot triggered. Looks like Roblox glitched a bit there, and we'll connect a function. So when like when the two seconds are over, like that's the whole duration of the proximity prompt, they're gonna do the typewriting function here. So what we'll do here is we'll do um script dot parent so that's the dialogue and we'll do dot parent dot parent dot dialogue dot gui so we can get the like the gui dot enabled equals to true so like the then the gui would show and then we'll do type right script dot parent call a uh, comma and then the then uh quotation marks and then say what you want to say so you can say hello um hello whoops dot dot game dot players dot local player dot name dot dot um um let's say take um let's just say hello take space you know we'll do a comment and then take this as a gift from me and then then we can quickly uh so i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wait a second and we'll do um we'll make the player speed faster so we'll do local uh, player use the game dot players dot local player then we'll do local character. So the local play is the player who's actually like triggering this proximity prompt. Uh, player dot character. So the character is your avatar. 
and then we'll do local humanoid this is basically what makes your like character actually move and everything uh, character wait for child humanoid the humanoid actually will animate everything on your uh, avatar too like dances or something in the game like strongly spell grounds and then so when then that's it so now we'll do humanoid dot walk speed equals to 100 so it's kind of obvious that we have changed and then we could we'll create some kind of like alarm or not some kind of like thing that would make it obvious that you have achieved something so well, i'm going to create a text table here saying you have gained plus 100 speed with some kind of sound so i'm going to add a the text label actually enable the gui again Make sure you have a uh, ignore GUI set on. A bit, yeah. And then what we're going to do here, like that. This will this will be like some kind of like decorative. So we'll take this to um. You. Actually, we can actually typewrite it. We're using this, so we'll name this to our um. Um, reminder so I will just say so when, we, when they get the 100 speed, it'll say you gain 100 speed, and then we'll just here set the transparency to a good color, and then you can set the text to nothing. But obviously, you're going to sc uh, scale your text and add a good font. Monster at bold, and then just on a new ice stroke your white water just like that and then what we can do is just set this visibility to off not the GUI the text label make the visibility to off so you can't see it and then we'll go back to the dialog and then when they get the humanoid.walk speed equals to 100 we'll do a uh, script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot reminder dot visible equal to true and we'll do type right script dot parent dot parent dot parent dot reminder oops reminder and then reminder and then the obviously the quotation marks here it will say um you have gained plus 100 speed and then exclamation mark and then oh and then we'll set the uh, now we do a comma again on these typewriters and set how like how fast you want the text able to be so i think the the best uh, option in my opinion is 0 0.05 this is how fast it types the message out and then i'll do the same here Actually, I won't, I'll set it to nothing so it goes kind of fast because we don't need like they need to see this instantly. And then we'll add like some cool like sound. So let's just say uh, redeemed. Um, this isn't good sounds on Roblox anymore. And just say achieved. That's perfect. Let's see this. And then for now. I'll just insert this sound into the workspace. Let's do uh, achievement. And then I'll make this play. Game dot workspace achievement play. So this is our typewriter function. When the proximity prompt is triggered, the dialog GUI will be enabled. It'll it will say hello, take this as a gift from me. And then it'll set the reminder to on. Actually, we'll wait like a 0.5 second here, and then it'll say this. And then say, Tyrite is good on you have gained 100 speed, and then the achievement will play, and then we'll wait 0.3 here, and then the sp speed will be 100. Now, if you test this now, remember to take your GUI and turn it off, enabled off, and then we can go to press play. Go to our NPC here. See, it says speak, speak to this NPC, hold it. Mm -hmm. 
then now we walk, we have a hundred speed. I just for I forgot to add a um space here. And then after this local script here, we can wait like four seconds and then do and then turn the GUI off. Like that. Now let me try that again. I put out of space again, but who cares? Like that. And then now we're running, we have a hundred speed. And then the GUI goes. Uh, if you want this to be triggered again, if you want this to be triggered again, you can just leave it how the script is. But if you want this to not be uh, like like achieved again, you can just destroy the proximity prompt so nobody can like trigger it multiple times. So you can do this, uh, game dot workspace dot npc dot proximity prompt destroy. So now we go here. The proximity prompt should be gone, so you can't trigger it again. So it's only a one-time thing. And um, there we go. But obviously you can do like multiple stuff, like animate this, make it cool looking and stuff like that. But that's it for now, guys. Hope this is a bit useful. I will make this into a model for you guys, so you guys can just take it. But I'll see you guys uh, later.